All right, so if you guys haven't seen our previous, 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 pre the other video we did about how to get your OSD and stuff going and, or your on-screen display showing all your telemetry on screen while you're gaming so you can keep an eye on things like temperatures and all that. Uh, if you're curious, you need to watch that video first because what we're gonna show you next is what all these different settings inside after, MSI Afterburner mean. It's a video I've done in the past. However, with the way GPU Boost works on NVIDIA and the voltage works on NVIDIA these last couple of generations, it's a bit different than the last time I did this tutorial. We're also gonna be doing it for AMD graphics cards in this very same video. So what you'll find down below is after we get through this um, part where I show you what the settings and stuff mean, we'll head on over to an AMD side of things, which makes the settings a little bit different. So you can find a timestamp in the description below, so you can just skip to AMD if you have an AMD graphics card, or start from the beginning here, which is gonna be NVIDIA. So let's go ahead and get right to it. Today's video is sponsored by me and these three graphics cards we're giving away. You can't see them because they're not actually here right now. Why? Because I want you to click the link down in the description below to see exactly what cards they are. Worldwide, for free, anywhere in the world where giveaways are not prohibited. So if you want to learn all about which cards we're giving away and how to enter and when it ends and all that sort of stuff, then you're going to have to pause this video, click the link, and go and enter. Don't wait. You'll be sad if you did. You know, like Wayne Gretzky said, the only shot you miss is the one you take and you didn't 100% do. So MSI Afterburner is a free piece of software. It's something that people seem to think, uh, well, it says MSI in the name, and I don't have an MSI graphics card, so it doesn't apply to me. And that's not true. It's actually a universal piece of software that just essentially reads the EEPROM on your graphics card, and then it adjusts the sliders based on what the EEPROM will allow and what settings you're allowed to actually adjust. Now, when it comes to NVIDIA graphics cards, uh, understanding the settings will kind of immediately alleviate some confusion. First of all, you're gonna need some sort of piece of software to test your different settings and stuff so you can understand what they do. I'm gonna be using Heaven. Heaven's a DX11 title, it's actually quite old, but it still puts a pretty decent load on your GPU. It's not gonna hit your tensor cores, it's not gonna hit your RT cores. So don't look at this as an overclocking guide on how to test stability. You need to test it in the games that you play because every game engine hits your GPU in a different way. New World obviously hitting in a, in a way that we've never seen since the days of Furmark which is why I recommend testing this in a bunch of different titles. But this isn't about how to overclock, it's understanding what each setting does so that you can then understand how to overclock. So this is the default skin. You might notice the skin looks different and this is probably gonna feel a lot like the previous video we did about how to do OSD, but we need to make it look the same for each other, otherwise you're gonna be lost in the settings because the skin changes the way things are and where they're laid out. To make sure you're on the same skin as us, go to the uh, settings button or a little gear, depending on the one that you have, hit user interface, go to the skin skinning properties here, and I am using the default MSI Afterburner V3 skin big edition. First and foremost, let's go ahead and talk about the uh, monitoring over here of the graph on the side. If you double click it, it opens it up, or if you just click detach, it opens it up. You can right click this, go to properties, and then anything that has a left check mark here will show up in this. The things that I feel are important for monitoring your overclocks or your temperatures is obviously GPU temperature. That's kind of a given. GPU usage, so you can compare temps with usage, which is what made us realize something was weird with New World, because even if the usage is low, the temperatures were always high. Core clock, so that you can see what your, especially if you're wanting to overclock, you can see what your frequency adjustments are. Uh, and then another one that's kind of useful I always find is CPU temperature. The one that has no number next to it is the package temp. I think it's important to keep an eye on what's happening with your CPU. So CPU usage is important too. The one that doesn't have a number next to it, once again, is the average or the CPU usage as a whole. So if you had the percentage available of all the cores, then like divided amongst the cores, that's the number you're gonna get. It's important to see uh, your overall usage. I mean, you might have one single core that's pegged, which makes the overall usage look low. So you can monitor each individual one if you want but we're not gonna monitor that. If you wanna know more about the monitor settings, make sure you watch our OSD video that we did prior to that. That's as far as we're gonna go on that today. Um, frame rate is important because if you wanna monitor your frame rates. And then GPU voltage we have on here specifically because we're gonna be talking about overclocks. Same thing with power percent because that tells you um, whether or not you're overshooting where your target is like we again figured out with the New World stuff. So with all that going, we can now X out of this. It's just gonna reattach it here. Let's talk about the sliders and we'll show you in the practical use. The core voltage percentage. This is the one that confuses people the most. 
prior to GPU boost being a thing. This used to allow you to actually manually set the voltage to an actual voltage number, maxing out wherever the, e the e BIOS or the vBIOS would allow it to go. So for instance, if you had a graphics card, like, let's say you have a 600 series graphics card, which I believe 600 series was the first GPU boost. It was like, that was what would allow it to go higher core clocks and was out of the box. Um, and it didn't take a whole lot into effect other than, hey, what's the power limit and what's the temperature? Can we go higher? Sure. So that was very basic, but you could actually set it, if it had a max voltage of like 1.2 or 1.02 volts or 0.98 volts, then you could set it to 0.98. And that's what the slider allowed you to do. That is not what this does. Core voltage percent, all this does is allow you to allow max voltage, so 100% max voltage at a sooner curve. So the way GPU boost works now is you have a, a, a table that is that the GPU knows, which says at this frequency, we only need this much voltage to get the job done. The problem is sometimes you run into a little bit of a stability issue where by upping the frequency a little bit, but not upping the voltage percentage and sliding it down some, then you'll start to run into stability problems where it's trying to run the higher frequency at a lower voltage. Now you don't have voltage control, you have a slider where you can take that table and just slide the voltage down as a whole. There's absolutely nothing wrong with maxing this out. In fact, most people say that this is a placebo. It doesn't change anything at all. And you are actually right. And the reason for that is GPU boost is pushing frequency beyond the max rated, like what's advertised because GPU boost is an automatic overclock. And so you're hitting that max voltage target earlier anyway. So what the slider allows you to do is actually under any scenes, like a cutscene or a transition between one scene to another, where the GPU suddenly is not under as much of a load, it can rubber band up to its max frequency really fast. And by having this slider maxed out can help it alleviate some of those crashes or hard locks that might happen from a sudden reduce of load, causing the frequency to shoot up real fast and the voltage wasn't able to dynamically adjust fast enough. That's the reason why I maxed that out. There's debate on whether or not it does anything, fine. Max it out, that's not gonna hurt anything. Don't max it out if you don't want to. Power limit percent. This is pretty base, uh, simple. We've talked about this in the New World video. That just basically says 100% of the allowed power, which is the advertised power. So this 3080 Ti is a 350 watt card. So 100 would be 350 watts. Each card is gonna give you a different number here based on what the uh, manufacturer has set. The FE or the Founders Edition card is a custom card. It is not a reference card. It has a higher power limit than a reference card would allow. It has an entirely different algorithm, or not algorithm, but boost tables, C states, P states, all of those are different for this card than reference. Your MSIs, your Gigabytes, your ASUSs, your EVGAs, all are gonna have different um, logic here into way, the ways that the power limit works. So this number is gonna change based on your graphics card. So if, for instance, we wanted to max this out, what this will allow us to do is allow the voltage to deliver more power than the actual factory rating, which would help with stability. When you raise that, power equals heat. You're gonna to have to up your fan curves. You're gonna to have to up your cooling in your case because you're gonna be creating more heat in the graphics card. So you have to be able to handle that. If you don't up those limits, then what's gonna happen is you're going to end up hitting a thermal limit before you get to your, your power limit and then you're gonna lose core clock anyway because of the fact that it's too hot. As temperature increases, core clock comes down because it needs to keep itself from dying. So temp goes up, core clock goes down. Fan curve goes up, core temp stays down, frequency stays up. It's like that's the Venn diagram you have to deal with. It's temperature, power limit, and then your frequency. Core clock in megahertz, this is an offset. The old days, this used to show an actual just straight up number. In fact, on AMD, it still shows a straight up number, like set it to 2000 megahertz. Why Nvidia can't do that is beyond me. So in the last like four generations of graphics card, that has been an offset. This is the amount of frequency or megahertz you are adding to whatever GPU boost is doing. So if GPU boost is adding 300 megahertz, which is a realistic number, let's say you have a 1700 megahertz graphics card and it's hitting 1995, which is just under 300 megahertz. If you add hundred to that, it's gonna add 100 on top of the GPU boost, not on top of the base clock and then boost clock that's advertised. So that's an important one to remember. You can easily shoot that way beyond 
uh, stable because you're adding it as an offset. This little uh, drop down arrow here, people get confused about this one. Typically you'll find that power limit and temp limit are linked. You can just always max out the temp limit. This, was, this will give you, uh, it'll have to hit 90 degrees before it starts to reduce its core clocks based on temp. Um, we, I always prioritize temperature instead of power limit. I don't think this do, does a whole lot anymore. It used to back in the past. This is just the way I set it up. Leave them linked. They always slide together. It's not gonna hurt anything. Memory megahertz. Uh, this again is an offset to the memory. So you're adding frequency to the single rate of the RAM. So depending on whether it's AMD or Nvidia, that number is going to uh, times itself by whatever the data rate is of the RAM. So you'll find that like adding 250 is actually more like adding 500 when it comes to Nvidia or that number times four when it comes to AMD. That part tends to confuse people quite often. Fan speed, this one's pretty simple. User defined, when you click this button, that brings up this fan curve that is in the fan tab that you can set inside of Afterburner. And you can click along the curve and start dragging these squares down where you want. If you double click it, it makes it a ladder. Or if you just leave it default, it's a linear curve. Again, double clicking makes it a ladder where it stays at that setting until it hits the next temp that's set and then it jumps up. You don't want a ladder because that creates really um, harsh sounding fans because they're constantly adjusting like that. So I would leave it as a curve. Your vertical axis here is, is uh, fan speed. Your horizontal axis here is temperature. So when it hits, what is this set to right now? 60, uh, like 58C. You can see it should be running at about 62% fan speed. And you can adjust that however you want. So if this button is active, which turns the whole thing green, that is using that setting. If it's off and auto is selected, it's using the factory fan curve, which includes zero dB and all that. So you can see the fans just turned off. So watch, if I click user defined, it's gonna turn on because we don't have a zero dB set. If we click it off, it turns off because the factory fan curve does have a zero dB setting. Or if you wanna undo auto, you can just move the slider and just have a static fan speed based on percentage. So with all of that, let's go ahead and start showing how things respond in real time. So we have our OSD up right here. If you have no idea what this is, again, that means you didn't watch our previous video, which I've said twice now, which explained how all of this works. GPU temp is obvious. CPU temp underneath that, CPU load, GPU load. Here's our core clock. Um, as you can see right now, I have applied absolutely zero core clock offset, but yet we're going all the way up to 1935 and max voltage. The max voltage in this car is actually 1.084, so we're not quite there yet. And this is our power usage. The reason why it's going up so high is I have our power limit maxed out. So if I put that back to 100, watch our core clock. It's gonna come down to 1905. Our voltage came down, our temps will come down with it. Our usage is pretty much always gonna stay at 100. So that's usually the first thing I would do if I wanna overclock something is I'll just max out the power limit. If you're playing New World, don't do that for the love of God. And then hit apply and you'll see. It automatically allows a higher overclock because our limiting factor was power. Now, if I want to add core clock, if I add say 50 offset, so we should end up getting right around 2000 to maybe 1980 if I hit apply. So it didn't apply too much because that means we're still pretty much limited here by either our voltage or our power limits. You can actually continue to up that. So we'll do hundred now. Now we're hitting 1995, 210. The reason why it doesn't add the number specifically that you're adding is because something else is limiting from getting to that number. So. If 1950 plus 50 is 2000 and we hit apply and we only got 20 extra megahertz, 25 extra megahertz, that means we were probably either power limited or voltage limited at that time. As the scenes progress, watch the voltage. You see how this is constantly dynamically adjusting? It's kind of all over the place. As this is adjusting, so will the core clock. So that's why you see these dynamic numbers that change. It doesn't just automatically apply 100 to, to it no matter what. Um, that is, just has to do with many factors of the card. Power limits, voltage limits, temperature limits, VRM power limits, memory power limits. All these things that you can't really see are affecting things as a whole. So that's why I always incrementally increase this number slowly, 25 or 50 at a time. Our memory core clock on the other hand, um, which we can't see because I didn't put it on here. So let's go ahead and 
Well, it's actually showing right here in the corner. It says 9501, but that's not right. So let's go ahead and add it here. Again, go to the monitoring tab, uh, memory clock, check mark, in OSD, apply. So there's our memory clock right there, which is 9502, so it is correct. If I was to go ahead and add, say, 500 to this, this will add exactly as shown. So you'll see right now, that should jump up to 10,000 megahertz. There you go, 10,000 megahertz. I find that the GDDR6 is pretty good about overclocking pretty far. We can even hit plus 750. Watch, look at that, there it goes, right there. It is ECC memory though. So GDDR6 is ECC, which means it's error correcting. What you'll notice if you've pushed your memory clocks too far, you start getting weird stutters and an actual drop in FPS because it's taking longer for it to error correct, which is actually holding up the GPU, which is slowing down your FPS as a whole. I would probably not go any higher than 500 on anything that's not water-cooled because memory temps on GDDR6 are high. The hotter they go, the less stable they are, leading to more errors, leading to more ECC slowdowns for your GPU. So that is honestly all you need to know regarding MSI Afterburner and how to overclock your, overclocks, how to overclock your graphics card. What you're gonna find for the most part is very little real tangible improvement these days. GPU boost on NVIDIA is pushing it nearly as far as it can go. For the most part, you might get an extra 100 megahertz as a whole out of your system. And when you're already shooting to 2000 megahertz, an extra 100 megahertz is not gonna give you any real improvement in your scores or any real improvement in your FPS. You might get one or two FPS in 1440. You might get 10 or 15 FPS in 1080, but in 1080 with modern NVIDIA graphics cards, you're probably already getting over 100 FPS. So seeing five to 10 extra FPS is not gonna not gonna give you something you can even notice. Um, if you're getting stutters and pauses, there's something else happening in your system. It's not your graphics cards clock speeds that are causing that. Something is firing up in the background that's taking up CPU priority. Something is, is getting in the way of the game's priority, which is causing those major fluctuations in FPS or just major pauses or like, you know, sometimes you'll be gaming and there's like a whole one or two second pause and then something goes. That's because a priority task took over the CPU and the CPU told the game, hold on a sec, I gotta deal with this. And then it comes back to the game. So there's something else in your system that needs to be smoothed out to stop those sorts of problems. For the most part, messing around with these sliders are safe. Caveat, if, unless you're playing New World. If you're playing New World, I always tell people, take this and drop it down to like 80. Watch what happens when I hit 80. Everything here is gonna drop as a whole. Boom. We came all the way down to 1785 megahertz. Voltage came down really low with it because of the fact that it doesn't need more than that to supply that particular frequency. Our temps started coming down quickly, but look, we're still at 98% usage. And the reason for that is it's still as much usage as it's allowed to do based on power limit. So people get confused and thinking that that, how come the power limit is down, but that's still staying at 100? Well, that's because if you put a screw behind your gas pedal, only letting it go down so far, that's still 100% of what's allowed. That's how power limit works or usage works. So if we were to move that screw farther down and you push your foot down farther, that's still 100%. So whether you move the screw up to 10% and you push it down as far as it'll go, which is only a little bit, that's still 100% load on what's allowed. That's how the percentage works on terms of GPU load. Now for you AMD users out there, this is our trusty 6900 XT. It's our thick mama, mama jamma big card. You can see everything's changed, right? Like I told you, MSA Afterburner reads the, the EEPROM or the VBIOS and tells you what is available. So core voltage is already maxed out in this card. 1.175 volts. Power limit's also at zero. We slide that up, you can see this just says plus 15, whereas NVIDIA likes to add that to the 100, this would be 115, okay? Uh, so that's pretty simple there. If you look at the core clock, this is where I said you can actually dial in an exact number, right? I don't know why AMD can't, or NVIDIA can't do this, however, that is the case. Now, 2474 megahertz. Blah, but yeah, we'll show you in a second here. So memory clock 2000, that's that number times four. So if we were to make this 2025, our effective frequency would actually be 8,100. So keep that in mind. Small increments on memory. It's that number times four. NVIDIA actually adds that number as a whole, which is weird because they don't do that for the core clock, but whatever, I digress. And then the fan speed and all that stuff works exactly the same. So I'll just go user defined because I like to keep everything turning, keep it as cool as possible. Um, all of our same stuff over here is, it remembered what our OSD was from NVIDIA, which is kind of nice. So it just applied it all over here. 
Now, AMD though, you don't have to use MSI Afterburner. You can just use AMD Radeon software, go to performance, and then this is where you could go into tuning and then you have access to all of this stuff. I personally don't like leaving this open. So I use MSI Afterburner for everything to keep it as simple as possible. All right, so you can see our target is 2474. We're actually running at 2410, 2380. And the reason for that is whether it be voltage limitation or um, power limit limitation, if I max out power limit, we might actually get there. Nope, oh, there it is, 2472. So now you can see we are actually getting to this number because of the fact that power limit was holding us back. That was our target, but our power limit was holding us back from getting there. We are maxed out on the voltage. Um, memory core clock, I'll go ahead and show you here. Uh, if we apply like 25, oops, 2025. 20, you can see here it applied some of it, but there's probably other factors that's keeping that from getting exactly to the 2025 like we want, simply because of the fact that it could be memory voltage, memory temp, all sorts of different stuff here. So here's our, I'm gonna go ahead and just go to manual, because I feel like the 6700 XT will get warm if I don't. So I'm gonna go 2500 on the core clock here, and you can see that this will up small increments. We're not really getting any higher because there's other things limiting how far we can go. So that's why I said like overclocking an AMD card in MSI Afterburner doesn't make a whole lot of sense simply because of the fact that it doesn't really change a whole lot because the AMD uh, Radeon software, especially on a card like this, has already kind of taken the logic out of it and pushed it as high as it can already go right out of the box. The settings and stuff like we showed you, you know, with AMD, they're slightly different, but kind of the same. In fact, AMD for the most part, not even really worth overclocking, especially since you can use the GPU master or the, uh, not GPU master, but their uh, GPU software that's built in with the driver and you can just enable like auto overclock or auto undervolt, auto memory overclock, and just max out the power limits there and call it a day. Um, most of the time, it's not really necessary these days. But if you're a tinkerer like me, you wanna go and play with these settings. And after a New World video, I had a million people asking me about the settings and what they mean these days. And considering there's a lot of new people to PC, I figured I would, again, do a modern take on how Afterburner works, although it was necessary because the functionality of the graphics cards themselves has changed. Share this video with someone that you know is looking at trying to uh, use MSI Afterburner and understand how it works. Watch our overlay tutorial if you haven't seen how OSD works so that you can start seeing your numbers up on the screen. And as always, guys, don't forget 31 Days of Jtober is almost over, but you guys will be the first to hear about what we're doing in November, which is actually called Jay's Giving, which is going to have, uh, well, you guys just have to be make sure you're subscribed and following in November because that's something you will literally kick your own ass if you miss. Thanks for watching, guys, and of course, we'll see you in the next one.